Hey you guys, it's Peter. And I'm back. Of course I'm back. I'm not going anywhere. Boost! Peekaboo, I see you because I'm YouTube famous now. Available summer 2023, the album, Dad. Shimmy, shimmy, AF. <clears throat> Now I've had the time of my life. No, I've never felt like this before. And I swear it's the truth. Peace. I got a request in one of my uh, last few videos for me to sing that song, which is so funny because I had just sang it in a video like a week ago. And then somebody said, will you uh, sing the theme to Dirty Dancing? Um, and I was like, well, sure. I just sang it so I know the words so I can sing it again. Um, anyway, how are you guys doing today? Listen, let me just tell you. It is currently 11.19 a.m. I got up at 6.45 this morning. I have already been up for so long. And this is like the fourth video that I have filmed today. I can't even believe it. So I already have a video up on this channel already um, that is called Taking Accountability. And uh, or the, it's called uh, Addressing a Video That Was Made About Me because there was a video that was made about me. This video, although it's a very calm and collected Peter, it's very similar to uh, one of my Peterisms videos um, where I just talk about some things in my life and I also address this video that was made about me. Um, it's a really important video to me. So I would love if you guys would go and watch that video. Um, I would really, really appreciate it. And I know it's not a hyped up, high drama video, but it is a really important video to me. Like I said, it's about me responding to this video that was made about me. Um, so I would like for you guys to go watch it if you're if you're so kind and willing to do that. I would really appreciate it. Um, so thank you. But I'm trying to get these videos done because I was sitting out here and my neighbor across the street. Well, first of all, if you go watch that video, you'll find out and you'll see evidence to the to it that my neighbors went to the farmers market this morning and brought me two pieces of pie and I show the pieces of pie in that video. But my other neighbor on the corner, sh her friend, she and her friend are at the pool and so they came out with all their you know their floaties and everything. They're like, come to the pool with us. Go put your swimsuit on and I said well let me film a couple more videos so I'm gonna film this video and then I'm gonna film um, a Peter review stuff video and a Peter does stuff video and then I'm gonna hope to make it to the pool it's starting to get kind of cloudy so I don't know I'm gonna try to go up there for like an hour and just get in the water with them and and float around and relax and stuff like that but um, I wanted to make this video um, I wasn't sure if I was going to make two videos today, if I was going to make a, just do, just leave that video where I responded to that video, if I was going to make another video. I actually had another video that I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about Patrick Starr, which um, I know a lot of people are probably like, who? <laughs> and then there are other people that are probably interested in it, but I was going to do a, a video talking about Patrick Starr, and I might do that tomorrow. Um, there's some other things, some other videos that I want to talk about, uh, other things as well. So I have several videos that I might make for tomorrow. So I'm not sure which one I was going to make, but um, I happen to be like rolling back through uh, this article, this Vanity Fair article. So what happened was um, I mentioned in my video yesterday that um, Adam McIntyre, because uh, Vanity Fair had not taken down this article and because the author of the article who had tagged Adam McIntyre on an Instagram, um, and he also tags him in the article, which we're going to talk about in just a second, that he had... Um, that he had privatized his social media accounts, basically, and was running and hiding. Interestingly enough, also, Vanity Fair used to have his other articles um, and a bio linked to, uh, I believe, linked to uh, their uh, the article that he wrote about Colin Ballinger. Those are no longer linked. When you go to his name or other articles by his name, it now goes to, like, a subscription page. So I think it's interesting that they're no longer linking his other articles. They're obviously getting a lot of backlash by this. Needless to say, um, the reason why I'm making this video is because I uh, went to see if Vanity Fair had taken down their article yet because Adam McIntyre had said, he had told me and he had come out in videos and tweets and things like that and on Instagram, I believe, that he was issuing a legal statement to Vanity Fair asking them to remove and retract this article. And so I wanted to see if the article is still up. And as of, you know, 11, let's see, uh, 22 a.m., on Saturday morning of July 22nd, the article still stands. And the only piece that has been updated in the article, um, the only part that has been edited is a part where <clears throat> they originally said that Adam was from Brighton, England. And, um, 
they corrected that and said Irish teenager. That was the only part that they updated. Now, I do want to make a correction to this video because I do think it's important to keep the facts straight and things like that um, in, in discussing this. Um, I had mentioned several times <clears throat> in my videos that the author of this article was 23 years old. I had read that somehow on a, a, maybe a past bio of his um, and, and like something else that I had uh, read that referenced him, that he was 23 years old. I don't know if those things were time stamped in the past, but um, a couple different people reached out to me, one specifically, and gave me evidence to where they believed that he was closer to 29 years old. And they, and they gave me some, you know, factual evidence of like, and, and I'm not going to give, because it was personal information, that referenced like ages that he might be or whatever. So um, it appears that he's much older, which is even more troublesome to me, honestly. Honestly, um, but you know, I did say in my video that he was 23 years old. He was only two years older than Adam McIntyre, um, and that he was in the age demographic of who Miranda Sings was targeted towards and things like that. So if he is older than that, um, that to me, well, I, I wanted to make that correction, first of all, because I said he was 23. He was 23 at the time that those posts were written, because um, they were clearly stated in those pieces that I read. So I want to make sure that I, I correct that in my video. Apparently, he is not 23 years old. Apparently, he is much older than that. Um, Assumingly, I don't, I, have, I don't know exactly, like the person that sent me the clips was just trying to figure out what his age was based on these pieces of things that were out there, but they didn't even know exactly how old he was. Um, but it, apparently it seems that he's older, closer to late 20s, early, like closer to late 20s. If that's the case, it is even more troublesome to me that he um, used the LGBT community and the stigma towards gay men as a defense against Colleen Ballinger. He should know better. He should absolutely absolutely 100% know better. And the fact that as a, um, a, a late 20s year old, almost 30 <clears throat> year old writer have, should have done his research, you know, and um, Gabrielle Bluestone of the Cosmopolitan article, which that article still stands as well. It's, it's just mesmerizing to me. I don't know what money or contracts are involved behind the scenes that these people stand behind their word. I mean, to be honest with you, it really takes away the credibility of these magazines. If you're going to allow a magazine, if, you're, if you as a magazine are going to allow an article to stand that is in defense of James Charles that leaves out pertinent information and is misleading and coercive to the reader, okay, that might not know anything about the story. If you as Vanity Fair, um, as a magazine, are going to leave up an article that is coercive and misleading to the reader that leaves out pertinent information and paints a picture of somebody and is a hit piece, and I'm not the only one that said it. There are attorneys online that are doing videos about this that are calling it a hit piece. It's not just me, okay? Um, and you're going to leave up a hit piece in a magazine like Vanity Fair. What you're really doing is, Ma Vanity Fair, is you're really discrediting editing yourself from any further information or articles that you might put out, right? And it was interesting because I got a comment on my video yesterday from somebody that's watched my video for my videos for a very long time, not just this channel, but other channels as well. And they said, you know, ultimately at the end of the day, it's really the editor-in-chief's responsibility because they let this article go up, you know, and I thought about that. And I was like, that's absolutely 100% correct, right? Like it is negligent of this writer to have written this article without doing due uh, research, without reaching out to Adam McIntyre, without mentioning any of the other victims, without, without mentioning, you know, Cody Tyler and how Cody Tyler was the one that led whole, this whole situation that Adam McIntyre responded to it and that's how it all started up again with painting this picture that he was making this video again, another attack on Colleen Ballinger like he often does is what they insinuated. Um, without leaving out any of these stories, without reaching out to Adam McIntyre like I said, right? It is that awesome author's responsibility, but ultimately, it was the editor-in-chief's decision to put this article up and to make it live, right? So, it's not only on um, the author. It's, I mean, yes, the author was negligent, coercive, misleading, on and on and on, okay? I think the author did a piss-poor job of researching this article. I am disgusted at the fact that he used the LGBT community and the stigma towards gay men as a defense against Colleen Ballinger. I'm even further disgusted with where he went to go get his definition of grooming, which we're going to talk about in just a second. But ultimately, it's also the responsibility of the magazine, you know? And so, as we're sitting here and we're talking about the author, 
author, I don't want it to be forgotten that Vanity Fair, okay, as a magazine, as a publication, um, also needs to be held greatly accountable for allowing this article to go live, okay? They did not fact check their, they did not fact check or do their due research either to proofread this article. I mean, where was the proofreader on this article? Where was the person that was fact checking this research? Or did they just let any kind of article, go, or do they just let any kind of article go live that they think is going to garner some attention, you know? And a lot of people were saying that Vanity Fair is no better than a National Enquirer and stuff like that. I mean, like, for me, that's kind of a mystifying statement, in all honesty. Like, Vanity Fair has been a respectable, I mean, maybe they aren't now, and I wasn't aware of that. But Vanity Fair, for many, 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 many years, has been a respectable magazine, you know? And so, that has highlighted entertainment and political issues and, like they say, like Wall Street and all these kinds of things, right? And so, the fact that they let an article go live like this, not only is it the author's responsibility for doing his due research, but it's also the responsibility of Vanity Fair. They both, Vanity Fair and the author, owe Adam McIntyre a huge apology, okay? I mean, it is just, it's absolutely disgusting to me. And the fact that this article is still up just says to me that they stand behind this article. Which, how you can stand behind an article that is poorly researched, is factually incorrect, okay? That leaves out, like, pertinent information and is misleading and coercive to the reader. Like, you stand behind that, then really you are no better than the National Enquirer or the Examiner, you know? That's putting up uh, articles about alien babies and things like that. Like, you really are no better than that, you know? And, and I think that that, that, that needs to be... Um, you know, stated. Like, I think that we need to focus our attention on that this isn't just the author's responsibility. I'm not taking any thing away from him. Like, he, he, he effed up, okay? He did a horrible job on this, and he needs to be held accountable for that. And obviously, Vanity Fair don't want to claim him anymore because they don't have any of his other articles linked. You know, I mean, the next article that goes up live on Vanity Fair by this author, I will just be, like, blown away, right? If they continue to stand behind this author and leave this article up. The fact that the Cosmopolitan article about James Charles, the fact that that article is still up, and the author's responses to both of these articles is to privatize their social media account and not put out a statement is unbelievable to me. And if you want an example of how easy it is to take responsibility and how well done you can do it to just take responsibility and move through the situation and still hold on to credibility, please go watch my last video because I show an ex exemplary superior example of how a YouTuber did that, okay? So it's not a difficult thing to do. But while I was going through this article, because I went back and I, I, I read some of the pieces of this article, because I just, to be honest with you, I could not believe that it was still up. I mean, I was blown away. I mean, Adam McIntyre has made it very, very clear that he is pursuing this legally, right? So I was like, the fact that they kept this article up is so problematic, and it's like, Vanity Fair is like, don't F with us. Like, we're keeping this article up. We stand behind it. Really? Okay. So, Vanity Fair, you stand behind people that have allegations of predatorial um, and grooming allegations. Like, you don't have an issue with that, right? Okay. So, I went in here and I was reading this article, and um, there's my neighbor leaving. Bye. <laughs> Not my neighbor at the pool, my other neighbor across the street. So, I was reading this article, and I was rereading the... Um, the, the paragraph that says, Public opinion, or at least YouTube fandom, swayed back towards a Ballinger. Though the pendulum would swim back and forth for years, which I explained yesterday in my video, which is absolutely inaccurate, okay? Painting a picture that Colleen Ballinger suffered for years um, over Adam McIntyre coming out with his video several years ago, talking about the lingerie and all those kinds of things, okay? No, Colleen Ballinger put out an apology video and everybody sided with her. Adam McIntyre got huge backlash over it. You didn't mention that, though, in your article, did you? Okay? McIntyre Tire established a new YouTube identity as Ballinger's whistleblower. That's a dangerous word to use, okay? Whistleblower. That, that word has a very negative connotation, and to use that word paints the picture of Adam McIntyre. I mean, like, you have to really decipher this article, because he picked very carefully, because he is a, you have to remember, he has his, he got his seminar um, from Bennington College, a very reputable college in creative nonfiction, okay? Which means he is picking very wisely, or he thinks very wisely, the words that he is using to paint a very specific picture of the people that he's talking about, okay? That's what creative nonfiction is. I explained that in my video the other day. The fact that he chooses to use the word whistleblower, which has a negative connotation to it, is very important, okay? It paints a very specific picture of Adam McIntyre. 
A new YouTube identity as Ballinger's whistleblower, frequently posting new videos and racking up hundreds of thousands of views by commenting on the hypocrisy of her every move. Commenting on the hypocrisy of her every move. Painting a picture that Adam McIntyre basically became a Colleen Ballinger channel dedicated to, that was not all Adam McIntyre has talked about. Okay, if you go to Adam McIntyre's channel, Adam McIntyre has talked about a lot of topics. He has covered a lot of topics and worked very hard on building his channel. Even in the midst of getting a lot of backlash from people, he has worked very hard on building his channel as a young man that is dedicated and passionate about doing YouTube. He has covered a lot of topics, many of which have not had anything to do with Colleen Ballinger. Yes, a lot of them have had to do with Colleen Ballinger because that's something that he's very passionate about, right? But to paint a picture that he is trying to call her out is the world's biggest hypocrite is not the case, okay? Not to mention that a lot of those videos from the past that he talked about did not have hundreds of thousands of views on them until recently when people went back to go watch those videos. They didn't have hundreds of thousands. Adam, for a long time, got similar views to me, 15, 20,000, 30,000 views. So to say that he was getting hundreds of thousands of views on these videos... You know, like, I know what other drama channel, commentary channels that are similar to me get. Adam McIntyre was not getting hundreds of thousands of views on those videos. Recently he is, and good for him. Good that Adam is getting views for sharing his story and coming out and talking about this. He should get those views. Okay, but then he says in here, by commenting on the hypocrisy of her every move, and he links, okay, this to an Adam McIntyre video called from, hold on a second, one year ago, Colleen Ballinger in big trouble. This is his example, okay? So then he goes on and says, Meanwhile, Ballinger continued to work on a YouTube channel that was far from her Miranda Singh satire, Colleen Vlogs, um, offered wholesome lifestyle content about her kids. And it goes on and talk about all this kind of stuff, right? But this is where I wanted to go in here and talk about another part of this article. He says, The substance of Ballinger's alleged grooming has not gone beyond what McIntyre has described in his videos or what a few other fans allege thereafter, which really minimizes, okay, the seriousness of the allegations of the, um, which he says fans. You're talking about victims of Colleen Ballinger, right? You're talking about the victims. You reduce them to fans, all right? Okay. Um, that it just, he just says it's just like, it really hasn't gone past a whole lot of that. Oh, no, you didn't do your research. It's gone pretty deep, okay? There's a Canadian attorney coming out and talking about how this is pretty serious, okay? There's a lot of other people that are coming out. There's attorneys in the United States that are coming out and talking about how serious this is. Colleen Ballinger got a criminal defense attorney that has had represent that has represented many people with sexual misconduct allegations and have been prosecuted and, and charged in the past. That's who she chose to get as a criminal defense attorney. Did you mention that at all in your article? No, you didn't mention that. That Colleen Ballinger, amid these, hold on, how did you say it? Um, alleged grooming ha that hasn't gone beyond what McIntyre has described in his videos or what a few other fans have alleged. Those minimizations that you make have forced Colleen Ballinger to feel the need to get a criminal defense attorney that has a long list of clients, okay? with similar allegations that have been charged and have had been prosecuted for those same things. But she didn't mention that, did you? Okay. So then he goes in and he says, he, it has not been interrogated by media outlets or reporting on the controversy. And this is when he goes in the whole LGBT thing. And to be honest with you, I got so heated about this the other day that I cannot get into it again. Okay. I just cannot. The ignorance that this man, this man, okay, this 29-year-old, allegedly this 29-year-old man, okay, whose husband was uh, nominated for a GLAAD award, okay, that is for the best representation of gay, lesbian, and uh, bisexual, and trans representation in media, okay, that he used the gay stigma, okay, of gay men as pedophiles as a defense to what Colleen Ballinger's allegations are is so disgusting to me that I will get so heated about it again. I could make 15 videos just about that alone, okay? You should be ashamed of yourself. It's disgusting and gross. I just can't even believe that as a member of this community that you had the, the balls to do that, okay? You need to come out with an apology to the LGBTQIA plus community alone, all right? That you use that as a defense. Are you kidding me? Do you, are you aware of the violence that is targeted towards the LGBTQI community on a daily basis based on these allegations? 
This is why people are coming out now and saying these kinds of things, okay? And saying that, like, all of this stuff about people. I mean, this is why trans people are killed in our community every single day, okay? For these kind of sick allegations. Yet you, as a member of this community, use that as a defense against Colleen Ballinger? Are you kidding me? And people want to say this is not a defense against Colleen Ballinger. And this is not a hit, hit piece against uh, uh, Adam McIntyre. Hold on. Let me prove it to you, okay? So then he goes on to say the described behavior does not approach the sexual exploitation or abuse that the actual definition of grooming indicates. Now, he has a lot, and I don't know if you can see this on my um, screenshot, but he has a lot of these things that are in red. Do you see here? Like, that's an Adam McIntyre link. And down here at the bottom, he has the word grooming linked. Okay, there it is right there. Grooming. He has that linked, okay? So, he has these linked to articles. Like, every time he mentions Adam McIntyre and him coming for the hypocrisy of Colin Ballinger, he links it to Adam McIntyre's videos. So, so this dude, okay, he had, he had the, the balls to come out and link all of Adam McIntyre's videos showing that um, Adam McIntyre has talked about Colleen Ballinger um, but, and then had the audacity to, to tag Adam McIntyre in his article on Instagram but people are saying that Adam McIntyre doesn't have the right to call him out and he runs and hides his social media account. Dude, take some accountability. Like seriously, you wrote the article. So I wanted to go in here because I had started looking up what these red links were. I was like, I didn't look before when I read the article. I read it twice. I didn't look and see what the red are, the red links were to, okay? So I went and I looked and I saw that he was linking these art, these uh, things to Adam McIntyre's videos. So then I wanted to go in here and see what his definition of grooming was. And I was like, oh, this is interesting, okay? So he must have gone to, if he was looking up the definition of grooming like I did, when I looked up and said, what is the definition for online grooming? And I was directed to like the Innocent uh, Foundation and different foundations that, that their purpose is to protect children and minors and they are expertises in the field of online grooming and um, child exploitation and manipulation of children and things like that, okay? That I used people that are expertises in that field to explain my definition of it and said that the victim's stories closely align. That was where I did my research. Now you would think that a research Research journalist for uh, Vanity Fair magazine that is going to defend Colleen Ballinger against these allegations that he would also have similar sources of research, okay? So I was like, I want to know where he gets his um, information from. So I hit it, right? Um, I hit the link. And where does he get his information from? The New York Times. I was like, oh, this is interesting. And so I tried to screenshot this article because at the top you can see the article is called What Does Grooming Mean in Sexual Abuse Cases? And I tried to get the rest of the article, but I couldn't see it because it's behind a paywall, okay? Well, I paid for it. I paid my $4 a month so that I could read this article in the New York Times because I wanted to know who he is using as... Um, a definitive example of what grooming means, okay? Since you didn't have the uh, research to go in, or you didn't do the research to go in and look at what the definable definitions are of grooming, online manipulation, child exploitation, and things like that, and child manipulation, okay, by people that are expertises in the field. Since you didn't go in and do that, which I did, and it took me about 20 or 30 minutes to read all the articles, the signs and symptoms, what these people do, and on and on and on. Since you couldn't do that, and I did do that, took me 20 or 30 minutes, I wanted to read the article that you used in defense of Colleen Ballinger, okay? This is so rich, you guys, that he used this article. Are you ready for this? Hold on a second, because I have it pulled up right here. Okay, so the article is titled, What Does Grooming Mean in Sexual Abuse Cases? Okay, here it is, right here. Are you ready for what it says underneath here? The word in the sense of stereotypically preparing a target for abuse is at the center of this is his article that he used for defense, okay, of Colleen Ballinger. I mean, like, seriously, this is so weird that you use this as your defense, okay? The word in the sense of the stereotypically preparing a target for abuse is at the center of the sex trafficking and conspiracy charges against Ghislaine Maxwell. Jeffrey Epstein's Good Judy, okay? Which then it goes in here and talks about how grooming is not codified in a law as a crime, but it is at the center of the sex trafficking charges against Ghislaine Maxwell. Grooming, grooming, and then it goes into all this kind of stuff, right? A predator grooms their victims in order to earn their trust, which Colleen Ballinger did. 
Okay, and it goes in here and talks about grooming and what grooming is. Gradually, okay, next the abuser, here it goes in here and explains, grooming illegal experts say is a gradual process whereby an abuser wins the trust and cooperation of a potential victim, starting with inter interactions that seem normal and benign, like paying special attention or offering compliments and gifts. Your article actually defends Adam McIntyre and the other victim's stories. It does you no justice as an example to what grooming is. But did you use this as an example because it was behind a paywall? So people like would have to actually go pay their $4 a month like I did to read the article that you're referencing to make it look like you did your actual due diligence of research. But you used an article of Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell as your example to defend Colleen Ballinger. You are a joke. Who out there can defend Jeffrey Epstein or Ghislaine Maxwell? Well, I can't even pronounce her name. Who out there can defend them? And that's who you use as your example to defend Colleen Ballinger? Oh my lord. Like seriously? You have got serious problems, dude. I'm starting to think you need therapy, okay? Next, the abuser acclimates the victim to physical touching and sexual references, like sending porn to that person, or asking them to send pictures to them, or asking them what their sexual preferences are, or what their sex favorite sexual position is, okay? Gradually, the predator exposes the victims to sexual behaviors, like those examples that I just gave. The process is aimed at breaking down resistance and making the victim feel complicit or responsible when the act activities escalate. I mean, you guys can go read this article. I mean, it is in no way defensive of Colleen Ballinger, yet he uses it as a defense to prove that Colleen Ballinger has not groomed these people, okay? I mean, it is unbelievable. And then you get in here, and it talks about all this kind of stuff, and it talks about where the origination of this word came from, and how in the 13th century, all this kind of stuff. And it says, the use of the word has become more widespread in recent years with high-profile cases of Catholic priests who approach vulnerable families as helpers or mentors before sexually abusing children. And, I mean, I'm not laughing at that. That is some sick crap. Like, let's just be, for on be real, right? And with the wave of the Me Too accusation of sexual assault, harassment, and abuse in the workplace. I mean, this is your defense against Colleen Ballinger. This article? Are you kidding me? Did you even do your research whatsoever? Did you read the article that you referenced? Oh, by the way, let me go in here and show you that the New York Times, who you... Rep who, who you uh, hold on a second. Let me get my... Um, the New York Times, who you quoted as your example to defend Colleen Ballinger that she didn't have grooming charges actually did a video, uh, an article called Maxwell Sentencing. Ghislaine Maxwell receives 20 years for aiding Epstein in sex trafficking, okay? And goes in there and explains again what grooming is the same way that the previous article did because they did their research. So the article that you actually referenced to defend Colleen Ballinger, the, I mean, you guys, I am, I'm like so blown away that this article in the Vanity Fair is still up. Like, I am so heated by this. I mean, this is, like, unbelievable to me. I mean, like, are you guys, like, a high school magazine that is, like, being printed off at the Kenko's, which I don't even think exists anymore? Are you guys, like, some, like, like underground? I mean, has Vanity Fair become, like, this underground magazine that just prints off rumor mill crap? That you guys don't fact check your evidence? You don't check out the links that he puts on there? Okay, First of all, he paints a picture of Adam McIntyre that is not true, okay? Then he minimizes the victim's stories and says that they are just fodder, okay, of fans that came out against Colleen Ballinger and that Adam McIntyre has constantly called her out as being a hypocrite. A hypocrite or a groomer, okay? Then he, he uses the uh, Huffington Post article and the Rolling Stone article takes out excerpts that defend his stance against Colleen Ballinger and then cites an article about Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell. <sighs> Two convicted people for sex trafficking as your defense against Colleen Ballinger. Now I'm wondering, now I'm, I'm totally understanding why she hired this attorney. And if this was his move, like a lot of people are speculating that this attorney is the one that is doing these things behind the scenes, trying to get these PR moves and these articles written. If he is, and you want to look at the long history of the people that he's represented from Pris Andrew to Army Hammer and all these people behind the scenes, and that is who he has represented, and Colleen Ballinger has gotten him his representation. I mean, I'm laughing because it is so, I mean, you cannot make this stuff up. It is so laughable and ridiculous that it would totally make sense allegedly that they hired this person to write this article because this person was stupid and yes you are stupid okay that you use Jeffrey Epstein and, and Ghislaine Maxwell as your example of defending Colleen Ballinger 
you are, I mean, like, this is unbelievable to me. And the fact that Vanity Fair stands behind this article, I mean, Vanity Fair, you and your author, your editor, whoever approved this article, and the title writer, you are all disgusting. Seriously. And you need to be held accountable for this. And you need to, at the minimum, retract this article, take it down, and issue an apology to Adam McIntyre. Seriously? Don't be editing this video anymore. Don't put up a new edited article where the research is done. No, this article needs to come down and never be spoken of again. You guys have already shown that you lack any kind of credibility. This, You are a crap magazine that has no credibility going forward. Anything that you say about politics, Wall Street, entertainment, or anything is totally hinged on this article that you are leaving up on your magazine. This, this article alone and this author that you are supporting shows that you as a magazine and as a publication it stopped. I can't believe it stopped right when I was getting to my good point. You as a magazine and as a publication, okay, have shown by leaving this article up and has supporting this, this author that has done no research and is misleading and coercive and misguided to his audience, by standing behind this article, what you have shown is that you have no credibility as an article, as a magazine or as a publication. And until you take this article down and issue an apology and a statement, okay, saying that you did not, and, and not just saying, we apologize to Adam McIntyre about this article, but saying we did not do our research, we were misled, we uh, were coercive in our city. You need to take accountability for what the, the damage of this article has done because you have now left it up for three days, okay? Just like the Cosmopolitan needs to come out because Cosmopolitan, with that James Charles article, they have no credibility either, okay? So Vanity Fair and Cosmopolitan, to me, are no better than underground magazines, and those are probably better, have better quality of articles written, okay? They're no better than underground magazines that y'all used to make in the 80s as teenagers, or we did back in the day, you know, that were just running rumor mills, okay? That's all you are. You're no better than that. You have no credibility going forward, period, end of story. And I can't believe that anybody will invest their money in you or buy your, your magazines ever again. This shows that you have absolutely no credibility whatsoever, and I'm disgusted by it. I'm absolutely disgusted by it. So I wanted to get on here and I wanted to talk about that. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I love you guys. Please go back and watch my last video that I posted because it's important to me. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye.